prevention starts in the antenatal period. I am demonstrating a perineal massage, which can be done by the patient with the support of the husband. It can be demonstrated by the obstetrician on a mannequin during the antenatal lesson. Measures in labor, sitting up in advanced first stage and second stage for head descent, accurate CT interpretation and direct supervision by the obstetrician in second stage, giving sufficient time for active pushing, minimize and critically evaluate the indication for every instrumental delivery. Fundal pressure not recommended, but if it becomes absolutely necessary, continuous, gentle, no rocking. Again, moving on, perineal massage in second stage. Lubricated fingers, gently massaging the perineum. So antenatal perineal massage, can you see the picture? Yes, we all can see it. Okay, now perineal massage in second stage. Can you see the photo? Yes. Okay, now moving on, the position of the patient. This is a time to review the position of the patient. Buttocks should be at the edge of the bed. Perineum must be visible and assess the perineum. Is it too tight? Is it too thick? Is it short? Is it narrow? If it is so, then consider vacuum. Assess the vaginal walls. See if the vaginal walls are stretchable. If it's not stretchable, then consider vacuum. Perineal support during delivery of the head. Flex the occiput, flexion. Prevent rapid extension of the head. Perineal support during delivery of the head and immediately after delivery, immediately after delivery of the head, stop pushing, and short, quick breaths in order to stop the sensation of pushing, gentle, slow delivery. Again, coming to shoulder, stop pushing. Do not ask the patient to stop pushing. Now, make sure that the shoulders are in the anteroposterior diameter. Do not start delivery until completion of the rotation of shoulders. Again, perineal support at the shoulder level. Do not push, do not push. Gentle, slow delivery of the shoulder. Now, at this stage, very often, we find the prophylactic macrobots may be beneficial. Why? It helps to apply the perineal support at the correct location. In that position, the perineum becomes visible and we can reduce unnecessary traction. Next, the choice of the instrument. Look at the perineum, look at the vaginal walls, and is there any maternal efforts degree of caput, the degree of deflection to assess the decision of the right instrument. Coming to vacuum, make sure the application is correct without getting the vaginal walls involved. Coming to forceps, which is known to cause more tears, make sure the instrument is lubricated and then hold the blade with the thumb on the toe and the tip of the index and the middle finger at the tip of the forces. Next, the thumb on the heel, sorry, thumb on the heel. Next, if the station is a little bit higher, that means it's not an outlet. If it's a low, use Pajot's maneuver. Pajot's maneuver so, and then 
also consider using the hand in the upright position in order to reduce the traction. Consider sitting down if possible. The amount of traction becomes very less. So to conclude, training and direct supervision is what we need in labor room and in second stage and during instrumental delivery to prevent traumatic PPH to a great extent. Thank you.